Today I want to show you a really cool plant that I just learned about a year ago. It's called wavy leafed soap plant or California soap root. And it's February right now. We just had our first rain a couple of weeks ago here in California. And this plant grows along the coast, near the coast of California and Oregon. So it's pretty limited in its distribution. Now these little green leaves are sprouting up. This is soap plant. And the leaves will actually, by May, will grow pretty wide. About it'll, it'll branch out like this, and then it'll shoot up a flower, a small flower stalk with very inconspicuous flowers that open at night. But what I'm really interested in most is down below, about five or six inches, is a bulb, an onion-like bulb that is edible. And it's called soap plant because it can actually be used as soap as well. And it has other uses too. This was a very important plant to the Native Americans that lived here um, for many, many years. So if you look closely, you can see why it's called wavy leafed soap plant. Um, the leaves will have a little bit of a wave, a curvy wave in them. And the leaves themselves are edible raw or cooked. But the bulb, it has to be cooked because it is full of saponins. And the saponins are they're very mildly toxic. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt someone. It might cause a little bit of disrupt stomach if they eat too many of them. But the saponins can be neutralized by cooking, by roasting. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna collect, I'm gonna dig up a bunch of these roots and I'm gonna roast them and then eat them. The hard part is getting them out of the ground. This ground is pretty hard, there's a lot of clay, and I have to dig down about six inches to pop them out. So here we go. The roots are usually about six inches down. If I try to pull the stem, it'll just break. So I'm gonna make sure I dig deep enough so I can pop up the root. There's a rock right there. These often grow in clusters. What happens is when they flower, they'll drop their seeds afterwards around the plant. So you tend to have small colonies of soap plant that grow together. It's a big rock right here. I'm trying to get around. Ah, here we go. Now you can you can dig these plants up any time of the year. But in the summertime, after they have flowered and the flower has died, they're really hard to find. I found them by accident while I was digging dirt to make mud for my adobe blocks. And that was when I first learned about this plant. Here we go. The bulb is covered in a brown skin. It's a dirty brown skin that once peeled reveals the white, very white inside. And this is the part that's edible. Now if eaten raw, it's going to not be very pleasant. It's gonna be very bitter and watch what happens. I'm gonna eat this piece raw. Now it's not gonna hurt me, but it does contain high levels of saponins which are very mildly toxic. But the thing is, because it's, it has like soap-like properties, the saponins will cause it to foam up in my mouth, making it very difficult to chew. Um, mm. And if I wanted to, it'd be really hard to swallow. Mm. Uh. It's like chewing on a bar of soap. Mm. <laughs> it leaves a, a sticky sensation in the mouth. It's, um, it's really not good to eat raw. So what I'm gonna do is, because I really wanna eat some cooked ones, so I'm gonna dig up a bunch more, and then I'm gonna cook them on a fire.
I'm going to burn this down to some hot coals and then I'm going to put the bulbs on them and let them roast for at least 15 minutes. That's good and hot now. So what I'm going to do is put all of these, or as many as will fit, onto these hot coals and let them roast. I'm going to cover this with this bark. It'll help keep the heat in. I'm just peeling off the outer skin. I've given these a little bit of time to cool. They cooked for about half an hour. And they're still pearly white on the inside. Hmm. Now once cooked, they have a consistency similar to sweet potato. A bland taste, not much flavor. Mm -hmm. They have some fibers in them. Mm. I'm sure this is a really good source of carbohydrates. Not bad at all. They could use a little more cooking. I think it would even be better then. Mm-hmm. But certainly big difference from when I ate them raw. The raw, the raw one just foamed up in my mouth and it became impossible to eat and swallow. Mm. This one's really hot. I'll let it cool. Well, there you have it. This is a really good and very reliable food source that's here in Southern California. And the really good thing about it is that it's available year round. The only thing is that it's very difficult to find in the summer and fall months when the leaves and the flower stems have dried and died. But, just digging in an area where you may know that these plants exist, you're bound to come across some bulbs. This is a really good survival food because it's so plentiful and you can actually get quite a bit of calories from each plant. Thanks so much for watching this video and remember always positively identify a plant before you attempt to eat it. You don't want to make a mistake and get sick. Mm. See you next time.